You want a GY6 Ruckus that looks like this on a budget? Check it. Welcome back, you guys. This is episode two of the GY6 Stretched Honda Ruckus kit that we offer on our website. If you're new to the channel, or are you just catching up, like you haven't even seen episode one, watch that first, otherwise you're really not, you're gonna be totally lost. This episode, we're gonna pull the 50cc engine out, start modifying the frame, getting tabs off that we're not gonna need, and getting it ready to put that GY6 super sweet billet mount that mounts the 150cc engine into this frame. And we're also gonna do that short wheel axle on the motor. Super important episode, maybe not the funnest out of all episodes, but it's something you need to know how to do. Uh, let's do it right now. So back here on the stock motor, you got the, the rear brake. You'll know that because you go ahead and push this rear brake lever and you're moving the arm. So I'm gonna hold this arm in manually with my hand and then I can loosen this. That's a 14 millimeter. You can't do it with your hand, but I'm just gonna pull that off of there. Just like that. And then there's this little cam you can pull out just like that. Right below the kickstart, eight millimeter. Pull that loose. You can pop it back in when you're finished if you would like. And now I can pull the cable out. 10 millimeter here. Also your ground for your, uh, your whole motor ground here. You can keep that off. That needs to come off the engine anyway. Another 10 millimeter right here. That actually attaches to the cable. Lift up the gas tank slightly to get it out of the way. And then, you pull, not easily, but you can, pull your cable through. All kinds of little brackets attached to it. Right up at the top here, this is the original cable. We have this th whole thing just dangling down. There's an eight millimeter under here. That's a nut. Pull this little rubber piece back, and this is our Phillips head. That needs to be lubed, that's dry as a bone. And you could spin your little lever and pull that out. See, see how the, there's that little gap? And see how that came out? There's that little slot. Well, I've got my cable here, and it's ran down. I wanna run the, other, the new cable the same exact way, so I'm kind of gonna Keep this cable, see how it ran all the way to the floor. I'm gonna uh, take my new cable and run it exactly. So I'll hook it up here first. Old cable, new cable end. I got this, you can hear it flop in the background. I can pull this sucker off of here and slide it on the new one. On the other end, looks like this. Pull that off of there just like you did your other one. This will free up some slack. I recommend putting some lube on here, getting the cable kind of primed. So not everybody's gonna have one of these, but this is called a power luber. See that little, little rubber seal? Pull that off, then just kind of clamp this down. Then you got a sealed unit. Grab a rag. And cable lube. Of course, we have this on our website. We have both these units on our website. I'm just gonna poke this uh, hose. This goes to the can. So now when I spray through here, compressed uh, lube, we'll go down the cable on this brand new dry cable. I'm gonna get a little bit of leakage. Do that and then put this little cap over the top. Clean it all up. So remember our dry levers. I'm just gonna kinda grease those up on the pivot points. Same within the pivot point of the cable. Slide it through our little area here and get it in its groove. Notice the little uh, seal is still there. Now I'll get it in this groove there and I can flip it around. Now since I lubed that pivot point up, It'll be way better. Make sure that it's uh, 
lined up. There we go. As far as the cable, here's our old cable. I'm just gonna kind of copy where this went so that it's uh, basically where, where it was factory. So I'm gonna do that. I need to put the 10 millimeter nut up under here before that. That really quick. There it is. And the little rubber cover here. And that just kind of pops and holds onto the Phillips head. Send it through the same spot that you had your other cable. So on the other end, we're not gonna use this right away until we get that GY6 motor in there. I'm just gonna put these on there. I'll let this thing kind of hang. So the uh, tail light uh, little bracket, you notice I already grinded that off, I, I showed you that. That was the license plate mounting bracket. Well, I'm not gonna need this either. This is supposed to hold the tail light harness. I could just kind of like, basically in the end, I'm gonna have to grind it flush if I want it to look right, but. So we'll pull that off, there's a couple different. You can grind this and this off. I normally just leave that on. We won't need this coolant reservoir anymore because that's for the uh, 50 cc get motor. It's a 10 millimeter. Once you get that loose, it's on a little pin here. I'll pull this off. Oh, push, push it off. Yeah, it went in there. And you can use this bracket for whatever you want, like a crankcase breather, or you can grind it off. But I just leave them. Back up here, there's just a few hoses that we've got to release. Here's our carburetor, 12 millimeter throttle cable. Just really have to loosen it. We're gonna use the same cable. This, uh, the Honda cable is really nice because it has a uh, Teflon coated uh, cable. Once you get this nut loose, you do a little swoop and it pulls out of there just like that. Put that aside. But this hose, it goes from the air box to the cylinder head. We've got to pull it out because see these little eyelets? There's one there and one there. Uh, that's gonna, not going to allow us to remove the motor unless we get that hose off of there. And you can unfold this little tab. Just open up your wiring and pull this little sheath back like this. And push this button. This is your stator wires. Push the button down and pull. And then on this white cable, there's a little button that you pull up towards the camera, like this, and give it a little pull, and you're good. Same with here, you can pull these out, just like that, there's three of them. You don't use those either, that's a little harness that stays with the uh, unit. See this little white connector here? If I squeeze these two on the bottom, I can pull that out of there. And you got your throttle posi position sensor on the original carburetor. You won't be using this anymore, I just leave the plug. Then you've got your uh, little choke wire. It's right back here. Squeeze the button, give it a little pull. Looks like this. And then up under here, we've got the green ground wire that we unhooked with the brake cable. So throttle position sensor, not using that. Choke connector, we will be using that. Ground, we're using that. So pretty much, we've got our complete wiring harness to the motor, unplugged. But we're, we're not gonna remove this because we're gonna use all this wiring for the 20 minute install harness. A few more lines up under here, like this um, fuel line, and this little breather you can kind of pull through. So that should be everything. Um, now the only thing holding it is the shock and the main bolt that's up underneath this little cap here. So we can push this wiring harness out of the way. You can lift this little tab up, kind of flop it out of the way. I'm gonna kind of get this ready. I'll put this uh, jack under here because once I pull this motor out, it's gonna be sitting on the frame. We don't want that. So let me loosen this sucker. There's one, same one on the other side.
Remove the little cap. You can reuse these, cover the holes up. They also sell, uh, we just sell billet ones as well. Now, the shock. That's the same size as the motor mount. There it goes. So I've got everything loose. Just making sure nothing's binding in any way. And I could pull the wheel back. You should be good, just make sure this thing's stable. You can blow your sphinx throughout. Now I can clean this frame up. This gas tank and everything, make everything look nice. Um, I'll, I will have to grind this tab off. I'll show you in just a minute. But honestly, that's it to get this motor mount to work. Our harness we're gonna use, again, we're not removing any of this original harness. We're gonna use that. We're gonna use the original fuel pump, the original throttle cable, and then we've got our uh, this is our rear brake cable that we installed. So at this point you can remove all kinds of stuff if you want to. This, 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 this. I've already removed the rear uh, license plate mount. Remove that, remove this, this, this. Most mounts you have to grind this off and all of this stuff because there's a plate that, that runs right here, but not this JDM mount that we're using. So the JDM mount is sweet. It's all billet. This is anodized black. It comes with like three bolts, this, and this adjustable like tie rod type uh, linkage, which is pretty sweet. Requires very minimal grinding, unlike most uh, mounts on the market. I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to grind off to make this mount work perfect. The reason why we chose this JDM mount, well first of all it's sweet, look at this thing. This is the shock re relocation mount. When you, when you do a GY6 mount, you always have to grind off tabs. This mount, literally, you only have to grind off this tab. So what you do is you slide this up under, there. see I'll notice that this little hook area is going to hook onto the original frame, and then I'll slide it up. And there's a hole right here, I'll put a bolt through, it comes with that bolt. So now instead of having your shock mount right here, we're way over here because it's being stretched. I'm just giving you a general idea really quick. And then you've got this giant piece of billet aluminum for the motor mount. And that is gonna, see these two halves? They come apart with these bolts. Well, it's designed to pinch this part of the frame down. You can't do that with this mounting bracket on here. That needs to be grinded off. That's the only thing that you're gonna to need to grind, which is super cool. Most of the time you gotta get up in the front, grind a bunch of things. There's just all kinds of work that you have to do to get them to mount. So that's why we chose this mount. It's gonna mount up just like that. And then, see this little spot it's on the opposite side of the mount? This is where your linkage is gonna set up. And then you'll be able to adjust your stretch I'll show you how that goes on. It doesn't actually go right here. It goes up to the front. You'll have to adjust, you can adjust your stretch based on your desire. It's pretty sweet. But I gotta get this grinded off. And I'll show you how to do that. And uh, we'll go from there. Make sure you've got like eye protection all the nine yards. Make sure you don't have gas things everywhere because your sparks are gonna fly when you do this. <laughs> So I got this off and that off, now I just have to smooth this out. I try not to grind too much paint off. Very minimal grinding. You're gonna wanna paint that for sure. It's gonna be covered of course, just for rusting purposes. I gotta get this other side. I won't film that, but I just wanna give you an idea of how that's actually supposed to go. So I have this motor that I have to install this short wheel axle on. I've already done a video on this subject on the last build on our no stretch GY6 ruckus kit. And this is our stretch ruckus kit, but they both have the same procedure. 
So I'm just gonna uh, attach that video. So if the settings change, that's the reason. So I'm gonna play that video now. Our uh, short wheel axle. Comes as a kit on our website if you just wanna buy the kit. Um, comes with the axle, gasket, and the oil. You notice it's got this really long uh, axle. There's a few different sizes these GUI 6s come with. Unfortunately, this is what size this one comes with. We want to install this short axle. It's easiest to get an impact, eight millimeter socket, and there's 10 bolts all around the CVT cover. You want to remove that. We'll do that first, and then I'm going to remove this 10 millimeter from the kickstart. So here we go. I like to do it in a star pattern, or in a star pattern, so there, there, that way uh, you're not getting any uh, warping the cases in any way. By the way, as you're removing these, there are some long bolts that, they're, they're right back here, see, see these guys? They're longer than the rest. Another one right below here. See that? Take note of that, those are the only long ones. Also, there's a screw that holds this guy on, this plate. You don't, you don't need to remove both, only the one. It, as, let me show you why. See, this is just a little tiny bolt. doesn't need to be removed. The 10 millimeter, that has to come completely out. Slide that off. Sometimes you want to note uh, where, in reference, see this crack here? I'm just going to mark a little line. That way I know that's where, where it was. Pull that guy off. Then you can take a little mallet, your mallet. I like to apply pressure here because if you don't, the kickstart could come off with it. It's a real pain to put it back. So, and be careful of your gasket. On the other side there. Um, there are dowel pins here and up here. I normally just pull this gasket off. Just be careful with these dowel pins. This uh, gasket here is just purely like a dust gasket. So I'm just going to get this these dowel pins loosened out of there. Just kind of pull and twist. Now I've got to get these guys off. Now that you've got all this off, you need to drain the old fluid out. This is a 10 millimeter, it's right here, right underneath here. And just so you know, this is where you fill it. So let's loosen that. Um, I like to, instead of give it a real hard pull, I just kind of just hit it lefty loosey. Just loosen that guy. Since this is a brand new motor, there's not going to be anything in it. I'm just showing you. What happens? It would drain out. Um, and then you would fill it right here. And, then, and like I said, there is a, when you fill it, it comes with a perfect amount, 125 cc's of oil. Now we're gonna remove these eight millimeters, two, four, and five on this side. So we'll do that. in a star pattern. Okay, now that they're all loose, on the other side you've got your axle like I showed you. I just normally take a, just a rubber mallet and lightly tap the axle, just like this. And pull that, there's our axle right there. There. There's our axle right there. I'm gonna pull this guy out just like this. Notice uh, these axles, they look exactly the same. One's longer than the other. So again, just pulling this guy up, sliding the new axle through. There actually is a little bit of uh, a little bit of oil in here, surprisingly. Um, and then you want to make sure the nut is off the end, and be very careful when you install it because these these uh, seals. Can, if you hit them, you can mess them up. Um, this is a brand new seal. There's a, absolutely, or a gasket. There's nothing wrong with it. This motor hasn't even been heat cycled, so I'm not going to replace the gasket. 
However, in the kit, it will come with one. So I'm just gonna slide this guy through real. Oh, one more thing. There's dowels here and here. Make sure you got those in there real nice. Um, so just slide this thing through real nice and slow. Kind of wiggle it as you do it. Uh, and then you gotta make sure the teeth line up too. I kind of spin them with my fingers. And then there we go. All right, now we'll just install our um, screws. Um, keep note, there are two shorter screws and they go um, right here and right here. Actually, these two. These two here. And then these guys are longer. Okay? So, and they're, they're one, uh, 11 foot pounds of torque. And you go in a star pattern to get them tight. I'm just getting them kind of tight for now. And now I'm going to get them torqued to 11 foot pounds. Now to put our kickstart cover on, remember we had the little uh, crack. Let me back this up a little bit. And a uh, little, the little split there. Make sure you're putting it on this way with the pivot coming out. Uh, that, that mark that you made, line that up with the mark, the split that's there. There we go. And eight millimeter, I'm sorry, 10 millimeter, 10 foot pounds. Okay, now we have to add fluid, so 10 millimeter. Loosen that guy, there's gonna be a crush washer. This guy. And you got your fluid, you're gonna add all of it. But I'll need to clip the, the end there. All right, just shove it in the hole there. I should have done this first with, without the kickstart cover there. And I'll just squeeze it. If for some reason you don't get the whole bottle in and it starts coming out of the hole here, um, it's full. Don't even add any more. So keep going. Notice how it's dripping out just like that. It's good, it's ready to be back installed. Again, this one's actually gonna be 12 foot pounds. Get it kind of tight. I'll torque it now. Okay, now that you've got your short wheel axle, you've now got your hub. Slide that sucker on there. Again, this is your, uh, inside here is your brake uh, drum as well, so. Make sure that sucker's on there nice and tight. Put the washer on. I like to use, again, red Loctite, just a little bit. You don't have to. Um, and we're gonna torque this guy to 75 foot-pounds. We don't want that to come off. These, the, the nut that comes with this is uh, actually, um, is a lock nut as well, so that makes it nice. So get that sucker tightened up. Now that I got it tightened, you want to check, pull back and forth, make sure there's no play whatsoever. And then there's there's going to be a little play this way. And that's just from the, uh, the gearbox, but that's okay. And you're all good to go. So on your motor, they get shipped with the, um, this is the gear oil breather, the crankcase breather for back in the gear case. And this is the head breather for the, the valve cover. So they're put together like this. Don't keep them like that, otherwise you're gonna have major problems. Before I put the motor in, I'm gonna add oil. We can't forget to do that. This engine is perfectly straight up and down, so uh, I'm gonna add oil. Oil will come in the kit with the motor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill it up on the high point. There's a graded area. It's not touching at all on one side, but see on this side it is. They need it. They need to be the same on both sides. So I need to add more oil. I'm gonna let you guys know something kind of cool. We have this as a digital download on our website, so you can like literally download this whole video series, not just the one you watch, the whole entire build onto your iPad, computer, whatever you want. I'll put the link down below, or you can go to RollingRangeDenver.com. Or if you buy the whole entire GY6 stretch kit, it comes for free. So I appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you in the next video.